June 19, 1951. Egyptian-born physician Ayman al-Zawahiri who served as the second in command at Al-Qaeda was born. A surgeon by profession, he graduated from Cairo University with a degree in medicine and a master's degree in surgery. In 1999, he was sentenced to death in absentia during the returnees from Albania trials as a result of his 1990s incitements against the Egyptian government, including the 1995 attack on the Egyptian embassy in Pakistan. As a close associate of al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, he exercised considerable control over the organization's activities. The United States and the United Nations wanted him for his involvement in the bombings of U.S. embassies in Tanzania and Kenya in 1998 and Bali in 2002. He was appointed as bin Laden's deputy in 2004 and later took over as al-Qaeda's number one man after bin Laden was killed in 2011. The United States offered a $25 million reward in May 2011 for information leading to al-Zawahiri's capture. On July 31, 2022, he was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Afghanistan. Ayman al-Zawahiri was charged in 1998 for his involvement in the U.S. Embassy bombings, a string of strikes on August 7, 1998, that resulted in the simultaneous explosions of truck bombs at the American embassies in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania and Nairobi, Kenya, killing hundreds of people. He was listed on the FBI's Top 22 Most Wanted Terrorists list, on October 10, 2001, which then U.S. President George W. Bush made public. The Taliban administration announced in November 2001 that al-Zawahiri had been bestowed Afghan citizenship. In May of 2011, the U.S. Department of State posted a bounty offering $25 million for information that could lead to al-Zawahiri's capture through its Rewards for Justice program. In 2004, bin Laden formally named al-Zawahiri as his deputy. By April 30, 2009, the U.S. State Department noted that al-Zawahiri had risen to the top of al-Qaeda leadership as the operational and strategic commander, and bin Laden was now merely the ideological figurehead of the organization. Al-Zawahiri ultimately became the leader of al-Qaeda following the May 2, 2011 killing of Osama bin Laden when U.S. Navy SEALs raided his safe house compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. Al-Zawahiri was said to have collaborated with the Islamic Republic of Iran on behalf of al-Qaeda. He allegedly provided Iran with details about an Egyptian government plan to seize several islands in the Persian Gulf that are claimed by both Iran and the United Arab Emirates, in exchange, the Iranian government supposedly paid al-Zawahiri $2 million and assisted in training members of his group for a coup attempt that never actually took place. In 1994, al-Zawahiri became evasive without a trace. However, it was speculated that he had traveled frequently to Sarajevo and Switzerland. His fake passport also showed that he had traveled to Malaysia, Taiwan, Singapore, and Hong Kong. British naturalized Russian defector and former FSB Secret Service officer Alexander Litvinenko who specialized in tackling organized crime and was a notable critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin alleged among other things, that al-Zawahiri was trained by the Russian FSB and that he was not the only link between al-Qaeda and the FSB. On November 1, 2006, Litvinenko suddenly fell ill and was hospitalized after being poisoned with polonium-210. He died from the poisoning on November 23 in London. Konstantin Preobrazensky, a Voice of America pundit and author who was also a former KGB agent, backed Litvinenko's assertion. According to him, Litvinenko was responsible for securing the secrecy of al-Zawahiri's entry into Russia and his training by FSB instructors in Dejistan, Northern Caucasus region, between 1996 to 1997. Al-Zawahiri was convicted of trading in firearms and received a three-year sentence, which he completed in 1984. In 1997, a deal was brokered between Egyptian militants and the government, whereby militant combatants would formally renounce violence. When al-Zawahiri learned of this non-violence initiative that had been set up to stop the terror campaign which had resulted in hundreds of fatalities and the subsequent government crackdown and imprisonment of thousands, 
He angrily opposed the initiative and then went on to help organize a massive attack on tourists at the Temple of Hatshepsut in an effort to destroy the movement by inciting the Egyptian authorities to nullify the truce. On November 17, 1997, six men dressed in police uniforms stormed a historical tourist site, the Mortuary Temple of Hatshepsut, near the city of Luxor killing 58 people, mostly tourists. The six attackers hijacked a bus but came upon a checkpoint of armed Egyptian national police and military forces. One of the attackers was wounded in the shootout, and the rest fled into the hills. Their bodies were later discovered in a nearby cave having committed suicide together. An Egyptian military tribunal sentenced al-Zawahiri to death in absentia in 1999 for the attack. Following the 2001 American invasion of Afghanistan, al-Zawahiri's whereabouts were unknown, but he was generally thought to be in rural Pakistan. It was widely rumored in 2003 that he had been arrested in Iran, but this was later dispelled to be false. On January 13, 2006, the CIA, with the help of Pakistan's ISI, launched an airstrike on Damadola, a village near the Pakistani-Afghan border where it is believed al-Zawahiri was located. The airstrike was expected to kill al-Zawahiri and was widely reported in international news over the following days. Many of the airstrike victims were buried unidentified. On August 1, 2008, it was widely reported that al-Zawahiri was critically injured in another U.S. missile strike at Azam Warsak village in South Waziristan on July 28, alongside an al-Qaeda explosives expert. However, a spokesperson of the Taliban later told the Associated Press on August 2, 2008, that the report of al-Zawahiri's injury was false. In early September 2008, the Pakistan army said they nearly captured al-Zawahiri in northwest Pakistan after a tip-off that he and one of his wives were sighted. Authorities searched the area but were unable to locate him. In 2016, al-Zawahiri took extreme measures to evade American forces. U.S. intelligence believed he was hiding in a place along the Durand Line, the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, using green screens to obscure his surroundings while delivering video messages. The Taliban and the U.S. reached a withdrawal deal after almost 20 years of hostilities, part of which the Taliban will be committed to refraining from providing a safe haven for members of al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. In 2021, the Taliban quickly retook Afghanistan as U.S. soldiers began withdrawing. According to U.S. officials, after the Taliban took over Kabul, al-Zawahiri's family relocated to a safe house in the city in 2022. U.S. intelligence started tracking his family about seven months before the drone strike and learned al-Zawahiri himself had also moved in from Pakistan. Upon his arrival at the safe house in Kabul, al-Zawahiri never left. This allowed U.S. intelligence to track his daily habits, monitor his routine, and verify that it was indeed him. The safe house is located in a neighborhood called Sherpa, downtown Kabul which was formerly a poor part of town but has since been developed after being taken over by the Afghan Ministry of Defense. U.S. intelligence learned that al-Zawahiri liked to sit on the balcony of this safe house, so they constructed a model of the building to prepare for the strike and avoid harm to the other occupants of the house. On July 1, 2022, directors of the CIA, National Intelligence, and National Counterterrorism Center discussed the planned drone strike with Joe Biden. On July 25, Biden received the final briefing of the planned attack, with all officials unanimously giving the green light to engage. On July 31, 2022, at about 6.18 a.m. local time, a U.S.-operated drone launched two AGM-114 Hellfire missiles at al-Zawahiri while he was standing outside on the balcony of the safe house. Al-Zawahiri was killed instantly, while the other occupants of the safe house were unharmed.